everybody and welcome back to Page to Frame Storytelling. Today we are going to be talking about the VFX done in Jurassic World. They no longer have animatronics. What they have leveled up to in the modern day is to put sculptures like they did for the original movie, several dinosaur sculptures in the Jurassic Park. They had similar sculptures for Jurassic World. However, they were really only used for if there was something on the dinosaur and it needed to be removed or it needed to interact with a live actor, then those parts of the dinosaur were modeled and moved by somebody else, which was, I think, a really great and good technique to use now. But because CGI has grown and evolved, we have these huge crowd simulation dinosaurs where they can be running wild instead of being in cages and we can definitely believe that they are in the scene which i love when there's honestly nothing there for the raptors that chris pratt interacts with the most they were actually had actors using helmets that looked and gave you the eyeline of the dinosaurs they use their movements to motion track and then replace through cgi which i think was very smart and incredible because there are some movements that actors come up with that if you really get into a mindset of an animal is really beautiful and something that maybe an animator without a reference could not simulate and i think that was very smart especially since in Jurassic World, they are such a huge part of the story element that I love. Now, one thing that both Jurassic Park and Jurassic World did is in order to make these almost fictional characters, even though we do know that dinosaurs exist before our time, there's really not that much information to really know what they were like. I mean, to this day, we are finding new information about dinosaurs that change our perspective of how dinosaurs look. So the one thing that Jurassic Park and Jurassic World helped was that in their storyline, they were cloned dinosaurs from also animals that we know now. Now, one of the things of the main dinosaur that is kind of the enemy is that any effect or any transition that they wanted this dinosaur to have they made sure that they mentioned in the script that it had G splices from said other animals in order to understand why maybe some of the creatures behaviors or even looks look so eerily familiar like an alligator constantly showing its teeth they do now have a tablet in which they have on set and they're able to put in the 3d model of the dinosaur and kind of move it to scale to give a visual representation for the actors to know hey this is how tall it is this is what you should be seeing there is a little bit less of guesswork of course the final image would look much more detailed have much more shadows lighting all that compositing stuff however it did give them a representation the big attack on the park where there were hundreds of extras there were only about 20 stunt people that were shot on a different location and then added into the scene to have specific effects or specific like they were being thrown into the air or they fell because dinosaurs were attacking them also the animators used certain actors or extras that maybe had their hands waving and gave them an opportunity to put a dinosaur there that they are flinging their hands on. So some of it was inspired by the motion of the extras, but there were still story beats that were done specifically for that scene to show the intensity of the dinosaurs getting out and of course ultimately the death of one of the main characters in this movie which I think was brilliantly done and I think that we have evolved in VFX to where using the technology that we have 
We don't maybe need animatronics that will glitch out or fail. However, there is a beauty to that. It is really how you use the effects that really emphasizes your movie or not. If you got value from this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you for your time. You guys are always awesome and have a good day. Bye.